the annals of culinary history, few traditions evoke a sense of adventure and rustic indulgence quite like the Bucan de Cochon. Originating from the Buccaneers of Hispaniola, this gathering celebrates the bounty of the wilderness, featuring a mouth-watering array of dishes cooked over open fires and enjoyed in the heart of nature. In his memoirs, Jean-Baptiste Labat wrote about a buccaneer feast in great detail. Today we'll take a journey back in time to discover the rich flavors, techniques, ambience and community spirit of these legendary gatherings. At the heart of the feast was the boucan, referencing the frame upon which the boucanier cooked their meat. This unique process served both as a means of preservation and celebration of the cochon miran, or wild pig, or sanguier, wild boar they hunted in the untamed wilderness. The boucan became a symbol of the buccaneer's self-sufficiency and resourcefulness. To create the boucan pork, the buccaneers engaged in meticulous preparations. The pig was brushed with lime juice, salt, pepper, and crushed allspice, infusing it with a delicious blend of tanginess and spiciness. The pig's belly was also filled with this marinade, allowing the flavors to penetrate the meat. Every step of the process was conducted with utmost care and respect for the ingredients, ensuring the succulence and taste of the final dish. Once the pig was prepared, the buccaneers embarked on the construction of the boucan, the iconic cooking apparatus that gave its name to the feast. The construction process involved four forked sticks, each about four feet long and as thick as an average person's arm, which were driven into the ground. These sticks were carefully positioned to form an oblong structure, approximately four feet long by three feet wide. Cross pieces of wood were then placed in the forks of these posts, creating a sturdy framework. The grill itself was crafted from sticks, forming a platform where the pig would be placed for cooking. To ensure the stability of the entire structure, everything was tied together using strong vines. The pig, positioned on its back, had its belly wide open and was secured in place with sticks to prevent it from closing up during the cooking process. With the boucan ready, the buccaneers placed the pig on the grill. The buccaneers also set fire to a substantial heap of wood that had been cut the day before. As the flames engulfed the wood, gradually reducing it to charcoal, they carefully transferred the smoldering embers beneath the pig. The buccaneers also threw the skin and bones onto the coals to add to the flavor. Once the flames subsided, the buccaneers carefully positioned the charcoal beneath the pig on the boucan. This method of indirect heat allowed the meat to cook slowly, absorbing the fragrant smoke and developing a distinct smoky flavor that would permeate every succulent bite. To transport the embers, they ingeniously utilized the bark of trees, adhering to the buccaneer tradition that prohibited the use of any metal instruments, such as shovels, tongs, or utensils. The buccaneers embraced the philosophy of simplicity, valuing the raw and natural elements of their surroundings. In line with their principles, even tablecloths were forbidden during the feast, as they were considered too extravagant and incompatible with the buccaneer way of life. Every aspect of the Bukhan feast reflected their commitment to a rustic and authentic experience, demonstrating their resourcefulness in utilizing the materials readily available to them in the wilderness. The Bukhan pork owed its exquisite flavors and tantalizing aromas to the buccaneers' careful attention to detail. The slow cooking process allowed the meat to absorb the fragrant smoke, and developed a distinct smokiness that permeated every fiber. The result was a harmonious fusion of flavors, with tender meat infused with the essence of the fire, leaving a lasting impression on the palates of all who indulged. A few individuals attentively monitored the pig, ensuring it cooked gradually and allowed the flavors to permeate the meat. This process involved puncturing the pig with the tip of a skewer, but caution was necessary to avoid piercing the skin and inadvertently letting the gravy drip into the fire. They embraced the art of barbecuing, further expanding their culinary repertoire. The term barbecued pig emerged as the English designation for roasted or broiled pork, cooked to perfection over an open flame. This technique involves skillfully applying heat to the meat, allowing it to caramelize, develop a tantalizing char, and imbue the flavors with a delightful smokiness. The buccaneers' expertise in the art of barbecuing elevated their feasts to new heights. They understood the delicate balance of heat, smoke, and time required to achieve optimal results. Whether it was the crispy skin of the pig or the tender meat beneath, each mouthful offered a symphony of textures and flavors that delighted the senses. Each dish was a testament to their sourcefulness, creativity, and connection to the bountiful wilderness that surrounded them. The feasts were a celebration of the self-sufficiency, their ability to transform the wild provisions of land and sea into delectable and memorable dishes. Through their commitment to preserving tradition and their resourceful approach to cooking, the buccaneers showcased their culinary prowess, their ability to coax flavors from the fire, infuse their dishes with smoky nuances, and create tender and succulent meats exemplified their mastery of cooking techniques. 
Once the Bukan had reached the desired level of doneness, the signal for the hunters to return was given through the discharge of successive gunshots. Upon their arrival, the hunters promptly prepared their catches by plucking the feathers or skewering the game and positioning it near the fire to be roasted. Hunters who returned empty-handed were not excused if they claimed to have found no prey. Instead, they were instructed to make another attempt to secure a catch or face consequences of their failure. For the experienced buccaneers, immediate punishment awaited those who failed to bring any game. They were obligated to consume a series of consecutive shots of liquor, matching the number of birds brought by the most successful hunter. In cases where it was evident that misfortune rather than negligence caused their failure, a small mercy was extended, the choice of the type of liquor they had to drink. When the pig was ready to eat, the participants gathered around a sturdy table, fashioned from sticks and branches and adorned with lush ferns and leaves for napkins and a tablecloth. Each person placed their dining essentials beside them, including two skewers called brochettes, a knife, a cup for drinking, and some unique leaves known as kashibu. These kashibu leaves were skillfully cut into a square shape, and the corners were folded and secured with small vines, creating two makeshift bowls. These bowls were placed in the center of the table, and one was filled with gravy, and another contained a mixture made from lime juice, pepper, salt, and allspice. They would mix the two together, and each person had the opportunity to customize their own mixture according to their tastes. As the initial serving came to an end, the more experienced buccaneers rose from their seats to serve the remaining guests, demonstrating their unity and camaraderie. Finally, the novices, who had observed the techniques of their seasoned counterparts, took on the responsibility of carving the pig, furthering their knowledge and skills in this revered art. The master of the Bukhan, who held a position of authority and leadership, took charge of carving the first portion of the pig. Equipped with a large fork in the left hand and a substantial knife in their right, they approached the pig resting over a small fire on its makeshift bed. Carefully they sliced sizable portions of tender pork, ensuring the preservation of the skin, and placed them on leaves. Other buccaneers then carried these meticulously prepared plates to the awaiting guests. The feast was not merely a culinary affair. It was a celebration of camaraderie and reverie. Buccaneers hailing from diverse backgrounds came together under a common banner bound by their shared love for adventure, freedom, and the pursuit of life's pleasures. The Bukan feast became a testament to their resilience, resourcefulness, and ability to find joy in the untamed and unpredictable. During the feast, the buccaneers adhered to a unique set of rules and traditions. Chief among them was the law of the Bukan, which mandated frequent drinking. Few among their ranks would dare to deviate from this unspoken decree. Wine flowed freely, its presence enhancing the flavors of the dishes and fostering an atmosphere of happiness. At the heart of the feast was the spirit of sharing the community. Each buccaneer played an active role in the preparation and serving of the food, reinforcing the bonds of their close-knit brotherhood. From the carving of the bukan pork to the distribution of the various dishes, every individual contributed their skills and knowledge. This collaborative effort exemplified the buccaneers' self-sufficiency and their ability to rely on one another in their pursuit of a life beyond constraints of society. The feast was a celebration of abundance and resourcefulness. It symbolized the buccaneers' mastery of their surroundings and their ability to extract sustenance from the untamed wilderness. With the bukan pork succulent aroma wafting through the air, the buccaneers reveled in the flavors of their labor. As the day progressed, stories were shared and bonds were forged. The buccaneers told tales of daring encounters, narrow escapes, and the treasures they sought in distant lands. These narratives served not only as entertainment, but also as a reminder of their shared experiences and the strength of their collective spirit. They laughed, they sang, and they raised their glasses in a toast to a life lived on their terms. Amidst the revelry, the buccaneers found solace in their chosen family. They were bound not only by their mutual pursuit of wealth and adventure, but also by a deep sense of loyalty and trust. The feast became a sacred space, a sanctuary where they could momentarily set aside the perils of their existence. As the night wore on and stars illuminated the darkened sky, the feast reached its crescendo. The buccaneers, full, drunk, and content, savored the memories forged and recognized the value of these shared experiences, knowing that in the vast expanse of the untamed world, it was their camaraderie and unbreakable bond that truly enriched their lives. In the legacy of the Bukan feast, we find not only a celebration of culinary prowess, but also a testament to the enduring spirit of the buccaneers. Their unwavering commitment to each other, their resourcefulness in the face of adversity, and their ability to find joy in the simplest of pleasures reverberate through time. The Bukan feast stands as a testament to their indomitable spirit and their unwavering pursuit of a life defined by freedom. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please like the video, subscribe, and leave a comment below. I want to thank my Patreon top tier subscribers, 
1660 Larry W. and Patrick Chamberlain. If you can help out on Patreon or with a direct donation via PayPal, the links are below.